In this video, we're going to demonstrate the new Muse 7 software uh, with CADPAD. Uh, CADPAD is a new tool for making it easier to uh, collect and, and, and move about your process of collecting data uh, using Muse. Um, we're going to demonstrate this using the new SPAT test uh, for the Microscribe, which uh, allows you to do a self-assessment of your device um, accuracy. Now, before we get started, there are a few configuration things that we need to make sure of um, in order to get good results. So I'm going to come over to the, um, the Muse uh, window. And first of all, I'm going to choose Settings. And in Settings, I'm going to confirm that I'm in the measurement units that I want to use. So Standard Inches is what I want to use. And that is selected, so we're OK. And now that in order to use CADPAD, uh, I need to do an alignment. Um, I'll choose the CADPAD button on the, uh, the toolbar. I'm going to be working with the SPAT test, and so that's um, uh, set in the, the presets window. And again, it, always, it is already selected to a SPAT, so that's good. Uh, grid is selected. Uh, this is the grid CADPAD as opposed to the mouse CAD pad. I'm going to say OK to that. Now one last thing is we want to make sure that we're set up to use an Excel spreadsheet. So if we look at the bottom of the toolbar, it says Format Excel. So that's good. That's what we want. If it didn't say that, we would come over to what's called the Strings menu and then make sure that from the list of the programs we can directly connect to, that we've actually chosen Excel. And as we already know, Excel is already chosen, so we're good to go there. So at this point, um, uh, I'm going to go back to the um, uh, uh, CAD pad menu, and I'm going to do the alignment. So again, we've got the presets for SPAT. We're going to align the CAD pad, and this sets it in our workspace so that the microscribe knows um, where this is at. And to do this, I'm going to take three points. One is in the lower left-hand corner of my grid, then the lower right-hand corner, and then the upper left-hand corner. And I'm going to choose OK. And we are now aligned. And I can tell that pretty easily by going back to our, our spreadsheet. And now let's, let's choose a few cells on the template to show you what will happen. Uh, I've, uh, we've, we've created a macros inside of the spreadsheet to let us jump around from cell to cell. And so if I choose 2, we're going to jump to test 2. If I choose 3, I'm going to jump to test 3. If I choose 1, I'm back to test 1 where we want to start. It's that easy. Now when the probe is not touching the CAD pad, it's actually in measurement space again. So this is a very localized um, you know, activity that allows us to do a lot of work without having to go back to the mouse. So I'm going to uh, do one other step before we continue, and that's to make sure that my uh, SPAT test is set up uh, appropriately. There are several options here where you can enter in your name and time of test. We won't do that today, but what is important is that we make sure that we choose the correct device. Uh, this particular one is a Microscribe uh, MX, uh, 6 degree of freedom arm. Um, the firmware and driver versions don't, really don't matter that much, but you can record those for your, your own purposes, especially if you're reporting back to us that you've got an issue that you, that you want to talk to us about. Uh, the units, we want to match what we chose in the um, Use toolbar, which is inches. Uh, we're using a 3 millimeter ball on the end of this device. And we're, uh, we, we've set Muse uh, probe to the default you know, probe tip. So with all that uh, set up properly, we're ready to go. So uh, the first uh, cell of the first test is, is chosen. As our starting point. So now then we can go ahead and start taking some data. Now the idea is to uh, take points um, in and around the volume of the device so that we've got a, a good idea of its performance over a larger area. When we're taking points we want to use um, uh, some tool that allows us to keep the probe ball in a set position. 
we've got these uh, special columns that we've made that have divots drilled into them. Uh, there's also, with the uh, M device, it, it comes with a calibration jig, which um, you could also use. When taking the point data, you want to make sure that the ball of the probe stays well seated in the bottom of the divot. And you want to make movements that allow the arm to uh, you know, swing through a lot of arm motion. Uh, you want to do your motion such that you're not um, you know, putting excessive force on the device. We want to keep it nice and smooth, and we're going to take 10 points. So I'm going to do that right now. First point, second, and I'll keep going. And when we're doing our testing, we do something called a flip, which means moving the wrist joint over to the other side. And I'm going to take three points there. That's more or less our, our worst case uh, scenario. So at this point, we have 10 points uh, selected. Um, and we've got an evaluation for this, uh, this first uh, position, which actually is, is very good. On a device that's supposed to be plus or minus uh, two thousandths, we got a little bit under one and a half thou uh, at that location. So now to move to a, a second test location, um, without CAD pad, you would be going back to your mouse uh, and the system keyboard to move around. But all I have to do is come up here and choose two. And now I'm already set up for position two. And again, I'm going to take 10 points. I'm going to do a flip. And there we go. We've got the information for that position. Now, we only have a certain number of columns to work with, um, but I do want to um, you know, get a good variety uh, in the work area. So uh, it doesn't matter exactly where the point is that you're taking. So we can move these columns around to get ourselves into new positions. So we're going to move to test three and go ahead and take some points. My flip, I'm going to wind up coming off of the uh, column and putting my probe back into the same hole. And there we go with that. Now then, moving on to test number four. Let's use this one again, but I'm going to move it out this way. Now you notice on the, the screen, we automatically moved on to the fourth position. Again. One of the, the nice things about CAD pad. I'm going to do my flip points. Now, if I decided that um, I didn't like a particular um, uh, measurement that I took, you know, for example, um, I pulled the probe out of the, the cup uh, and I want to take it over, you know, I can go back. Let's go back to uh, test point uh, number three. Okay, and then uh, the CAD pad will put it right back at the top, and I can go ahead and start taking that data again. I'll flip my arm over, three points. Whoops, I jumped out on that last point. I don't want to retake everything, so I can, again, I can come back down to CAD pad, and I'll actually use a different button which only jumps me back up to my uh, flip points. There's, uh, it's set up to retake effectively the last three points. So I don't have to redo everything. And again, I didn't have to take my hands off of uh, the microscribe in order to make that, uh, make that jump. All right, so let's move on to position number five. Choose it on CAD pad. Now move the device around to capture a good set of points. Okay. Now that I'm going to move on to six, I'll just use this one right here. I'm going to move my column over here so I've got another point to take. 
choose 0 0.7. So now we're going to capture 0.7. Again, work my flip in. And we can move on to 0.8. On to 0.9. Which, let's move this out here so we've got another position. Don't have to do flips every time. And then point number 10. Let's do that right here. And with that, we've collected all the data that we need for this test. So I'm going to move back over to the front side of the test. And we can start looking at, at uh, results. So we're seeing a, uh, all of the um, uh, numbers for all of the tests. Actually, test number uh, 10 was quite off. So there was some problem. I actually must have done something when doing that test. So we need to retake it. <laughs> I can come back up, choose uh, the top. Now let's come back over here. Pen. Go back to the front of our test, and now I see that we've got much better looking numbers, and this gives us um, both the specification for the device plus our, our tested average. Now my tested average was a little bit higher than uh, the spec for the device, but of course working through a demo like this, um, I don't always get the best um, you know, results. In uh, any event, uh, this device uh, does seem to be measuring, you know, quite well. So you can see using CADPAD makes uh, the testing process a lot easier because I can go right through it without having to go back to the keyboard and go back to the mouse. So that's the intended, you know, power of this. Uh, this particular CADPAD uh, works uh, with an Excel spreadsheet that we've set up, and so it's got specific macros that get run every time you, you choose a um, you know, position on this. Um, it's intended to uh, allow you to run other types of macros with other, other programs. And so as we start expanding the capabilities of the product, you'll see more and more of those preferences being available to you. Now there's another side to CAD pad that we haven't talked about yet, and that's the mouse emulation. So next I'm going to show you how that version of CAD pad works.